Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.3.7, Navigating the iOS. This assignment is a part of the CCNA Version 7 Intro to Networks curriculum. So in this assignment, we are going to explore establishing a basic connection from an end device like a PC or a laptop to a switch or a router. In this particular packet tracer, we have a switch, but either way, you're looking at how can you connect to it to configure it, make configurations, change host names, set IP addresses, all types of different stuff, depending on if it's a switch or a router and your particular networking situation. Now, there are two ways that you can do that. Now, obviously in packet tracer, we've got these great uh, emulating devices here, but in a real world, your switch would probably be in the corner of a room out of the way or in a data closet somewhere. So you can't just go on up to it and click on it like this. And luckily they have it blocked here because a lot of times in Packet Tracer, you can click on the device and go to CLI and the configuration uh, command line interface will come up. In real world, you can't do that. And that's why they have it locked here. So in a real world, you would either need to connect a console cable from your end device like a PC or a laptop and connect that to the switch or routers um, console port. <clears throat> Now, in the newer ones, uh, they have a mini USB that'll go from the um, computer's end to the uh, switch's console cable, the router's console cable. Here, uh, it uses a little bit older connection, a RS-232 port, but either way, it's still a console connection. You could also, another way, instead of doing that, is uh, using, if it's like way far away, if you're sitting on the beach, happen to be, right, and you needed to remote into your router or your switch to make configuration changes, you could use a uh, program such as PuTTY or TerraTerm or something like that and use the IP address of the uh, switch or the router if you already had that set up and you could either use telnet which is not secure um, people could see everything that you're sending with telnet <clears throat> or you could use SSH that is an encrypted connection over the internet but you do have to set that stuff up beforehand so you would have to locally set it up first before you're able to remote into it over the internet now we're going to use a console cable. A console cable is not an internet connection. It's technically an out of band connection that just goes from the PC to the switch. So we're going to click the, con the connections icon, which is that lightning bolt symbol. And we're going to hover over the, uh, like the light blue color. It says console cable here at the bottom. We're going to click that and we want to click the PC and you see the different available ports here. We're going to choose the RS-232 port. And then we're going to click the switch and you see all the different ports available here, but we want just the console port. OK, so <clears throat> then we're going to establish that connection. We're going to click on the PC, go to desktop and we're going to go to terminal. OK, so this will allow us to bring up a terminal. And again, you can use PuTTY or TerraTerm for this as well. Um, Hyper terminal used to come on older versions of Windows. I don't believe it is in Windows 10 anymore. And you can leave all these settings default and we're going to click OK. All right. Now the next one says to explore. So this is probably your first time typing in any commands here. So I'm going to press enter here and it <clears throat> wants us to start uh, configuring this device. Now right here we are at the prompt and let me zoom in a little bit here. All right, we're at our prompt right here and it tells us it wants us to um, type a question mark. This will display all the available commands that we possibly could type in right here. Okay, um, and you can see connect, log out, all these different things, telnet. Uh, we are going to do enable or you can type en. You will get used to the short commands that it allows. So if I do en or enable, okay, It'll take either one and press enter. You see it basically goes up a privilege level. So we are now where it has a pound symbol. Here you can do show commands and lots of great things. So if you were to type like show, a space, and question mark, it'll show you a plethora of options that you could actually type after that. If you ever see the more option, you want to hit the space bar so it'll page you through the options. If you do a question mark right up on the uh, Word here. It's so like if I did S-H-O 
and hit question mark, you see it'll say, hey, you could actually type show here. So if you do a space and a question mark, it'll show you what could come after that word. If you do a question mark right up on the, like in the middle of the word without typing a space, then it'll show you if that word is correct. You can also hit the tab key and it will finish out the word if there's only one option. If you hit tab twice and there are multiple options. It'll also show you what options could be if there's more than one that starts with SHO or whatever the um, command you're typing is. Okay. So next, it wants us to um, see how the prompt changed. You saw how that changed there. Okay. Uh, you could look at how many letters start with the command C or start with the letter C. So you could do C question mark and you see clock clear clock configure connect copy all right so to go to the next spot if we do configure and then terminal or config t this is where we will spend a lot of time in our class so if we do config T, this stands for configure terminal. It's just a short command and hit enter. This is where we will do a lot of configurations, whether we're configuring IP addresses, MAC addresses, or so on. All right. Now, to go in between some of these prompts, if I type exit here, it'll take me back one step. I hit enter one more time. This is where I can type show commands. One important one is show run. This will actually show you and bring up a lot of configurations that are currently configured. Now, right now, the only thing is the host name is S1. Usually by default, it's just switch. So it'll show you each port. Uh, this is the area where like a VLAN, we'll talk about what that is later. Default gateway has been configured. This is where your passwords and stuff will be uh, configured. So not many things have been configured on this router yet. You can also do another important one, which is copy run start. This basically saves your configuration file so that if your, your router or switch is uh, powered off for some reason or anything, you won't lose all the configuration. So it's just like working in a Word document. If you close that out before you save it, then none of your uh, changes will be saved. All right. <clears throat> so let's look at else what it wants. It wants to do show clock. All right, and it wants you to just look at what are the options that are displayed. Okay, so it shows us the clock. Now you see here, this is way the wrong date, right? This is from 1993. So then we go to clock set, and I can set the clock here. So I'm going to go to clock set. All right, and it allows you to do a question mark so you can see what format does it want it in. Hour, hour, colon, minute, minute, colon, second, second. So it wants you to type 15, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, zero. So we do 15, zero, zero, zero. Now let's do another one. Now it asks you for the day of the month and the month. All right, so it wants us to try to attempt to set it to January 31st, 2035. Um, and to basically just see what happens here. So let's do it. 01 31 2035. Uh, All right. So you see it says invalid input. So let's do this. All right. So 31 and then the month. All right. Month of the year. So let's see. If it wants, uh, let's try a one, see what happens. All right, unrecognized command. Let's try January. All right, you see that works. So see how you can, even if you don't know, you can piece this stuff together. And then 2035 is the latest year you can possibly do here if you look at that. All right, then another question mark. CR means there's nothing else left. You just basically want to press enter. You hit enter, now it is successfully set. So anytime you don't see something return, most of the time that's a good thing. Uh, if you ever wanna page up through your old commands, commands, you can hit the up arrow and you can see we can go back through all the stuff I've typed at this level. Now, if I do show clock, instead of it being that time in 1993, you see now it says uh, 15, remember this is military time, so that's about three o'clock. Uh, 17 seconds <clears throat> and then it says it's Wednesday January 31st 2035 all right so obviously it's not that date but we set it there okay on purpose so now we can do you can see it actually you have it it has you set a different time 
all right and see what information was returned there as well now again that's kind of just arbitrary again showing you how to go in and out of these things again um, if you want to go up a level config T will take you to the next level if you want to go back a level exit again if you uh, in Packet Tracer, of course, going to file save does save your configurations. But if you were to like power on and power off this device in real life or in Packet Tracer, because again, it does have that option. If I close this out and go to this device right here, it actually has a power button for the routers. I don't think it has it for the switch. But if you were to power this device off and on or you could power cycle it through the command line, then it would not save your changes all right so be mindful of that you can do a copy run start there okay so that goes through this lab it's really just for you to get working inside of packet tracer and seeing how to connect your pc to a switch to get to that command line so that we can make some configurations and getting used to the command line interface